Hi, I'm Darren Doris with Nomad Design. I've been a professional captain, mate, and angler for the better part of 20 years, and some of the most amazing innovations have come out in the last couple years, certainly included the slipstream. This, I want to show you today how to fly it from a kite. Now, all you West Coast guys, this is how you love to do it. East Coast, it's starting to make its way over here. Don't miss the bus on this. But I want to show you guys exactly how to rig this flying fish to fly from a kite so you're successful. First thing we need is a piece of 300 pound mono. So you're going to take that mono and there are multiple attachment points on every one of these slip streams. But for the kite, you want to use the ring that's at the absolute very top. I'm going to take my 300 pound monofilament and go right through that loop. Everything I'm going to rig now is going to be aft of that loop. I'm going to take my bead that comes along with the rigging kit. It slides right up against that ring. I'm going to go ahead and slide my crimp on. And then I'm going to go ahead and slide my chafe tubing on. And then I'm going to grab the BKK hook that comes along with the rigging package as well. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to crimp this just as if it were a trolling lure. Now, remember, when you do crimp, you want to make sure that you do not crimp directly to the edges of the sleeve. You want them to flare out slightly so it doesn't create a pinch point. I'll do the same thing on the other side. And because of the long one, I'm also going to crimp the middle here. There we go. So that there is the perfect setup to keep this main hook if you pull forward on the leader, you're going to realize that the hook will sit almost middle of that flying fish. Problem is, slides around, and that fish is going to have to get its complete mouth around that entire bait. That may not happen. Now, most of the guys that fish out on the West Coast, this is not a good enough setup. They need a stinger hook. Sometimes those bluefin bite these a little bit short. So we're going to add a treble hook as a stinger. Now adding a treble hook is not that big of a deal. All we're going to do is now take another piece of 300 pounds, probably about 12 inches long, a treble hook and some sleeves. I'll put the sleeve on. I'm going to take some chafe tubing, slide that right on the end of the monofilament as well, and then I'm going to take the treble hook and put that on. Bend it over and go ahead and crimp same way I did on the main hook making sure always never to crimp the ends of the sleeve just like that and again because I'm using the longs I'll go right there in the middle as well so all I've done now is crimped the treble hook to a piece of 300 pound leader I want that treble hook to sit right in the back here and dangle, acting as a stinger hook. So I'm going to make sure that I pull my main hook forward as far as it's going to go and keep my treble exactly where I want it back there and then measure. I'm now going to put a sleeve on the stinger leader, put it right through the loop of the main hook and I'm going to go ahead and crimp that. Now remember I measure but I'll double check. Remember, measure twice and cut once, right? All right. So now, the hook sits in that channel. I pull it all the way forward to the bead, and my stinger lays right there. Perfect. Now, I can crimp this tight. And cut off that excess. We're almost done actually. So now I've got mono that goes through the top. I've got my bead that's soft plastic. I've got my main hook that's crimped to the leader and I've got my stinger hook that is crimped as well. But all of this is gonna simply fall around as it's flying from a kite. So I need to find a way or have found a way, I should say, to keep it so that everything stays where you put it. And that's using rigging floss. So waxed rigging floss is an excellent tool for keeping things where we want them to be. It's a simple concept. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this wax floss and go front of the wings, and I'm going to wax floss that crimp 
right there. So all I'm going to do is slide the rigging floss, put the two ends together, and do a double knot. Just a regular old double hand knot, double overhand knot. Once I do that, I'm going to pull. As I pull them, it will begin to cinch up. I want to make sure that my hook and my crimp are exactly where I want them to be when this happens. There we go. Almost there, just a little tweak there. There it goes. Okay, and pull tight and pull tight. Okay, that's my first one. I've now used the wax floss to keep this in place, but I'd also now need the hook to stay in place. So what I'm gonna do now is another set of rigging floss, another piece. Go ahead and slide it underneath the body here. And I want that rigging floss to hold this right at the beginning of the bend of the hook. So I'm going to pull these up and again, together make a double overhand knot. There's once and twice, begin pulling sideways across from each other. Make sure that my hook is exactly where I want it to be. And pull tight. There we go. So notice now as I'm moving this, I'll tighten that a little bit more. There we go. As I'm moving this now, the hook's not going anywhere. So now I need to secure the stinger. The last way to do that is again with a piece of rigging floss right here at the tail end, right on that crimp. So I'll grab another piece of rigging floss here. Come up underneath the tail. Again, double overhand knot. And pull tight. Make sure it's seated where I want it to be. And right there is good. And pull tight. There we go. All right. See that? Nothing moves. It stays where it is. Best hookup ratio, just like that. So that right there is the best way to rig a kite slipstream for tuna. I'm Captain Darren Doris. Good chemistry too. Longport, New Jersey. Good fishing.